So how are we this morning? Good. Everyone practiced, right? We can all stand on our heads now. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So uh, any questions before we get started? Any questions? All right. Nothing? Nothing at all? Is it too early? So, so bottom line is the vestibular system is, is probably, honestly speaking truthfully, the vestibular system is, is more significant to your balance than the physical part. They're both very, very important, but it just goes to show you how, how important your vision and your hearing are when it comes to balance. Everyone should be getting their hearing and their vision checked yearly. I would strongly recommend you do that. Um, whenever you close your eyes, think about it like this, okay? Um, Kobe Bryant, great athlete, right? Recently passed away. This is when the majority of us, the majority of the public, found out about the two types of flying, whether it be a plane or a helicopter, right? You have visual flying, and then you have instrumentation and obvious explanations, right? Visual, you can see with your eyes and the pilot is able to guide the plane. Uh, and then you have instrumentation flying where you're relying on all of your instruments to tell you the information. That can be a bit unnerving because now you're having to trust the data being given by something that you have no control over, supposedly, right? You have to rely on the mechanics all the engineers, all those people to have done their jobs, and now these things are operating efficiently. When we close our eyes, we are flying or balancing instrumentation type balance, right? Does that make sense? Visually, we are much more secure when we know what's coming at us. When we close our eyes, that's just a variable that we use because what it does is it forces our brain now like if you were to lose your eyesight or lose your hearing, God forbid, you know, the other senses heighten. Well, that's kind of the thing here, right? When you close your eyes, you take that piece of your system out of the equation. Now you're solely reliant on the data being given from your feet, from those proprioceptors in those nerve endings in our legs, right? And also our ears. And that just goes to show you how important that visual part of our balance can be. Does that make sense? I made that up. It's too early for that. We'll cut that out. But that's a great question. Yeah. Any more questions? All right. So, you know, it's hard to give that secret up because what I do is work on the physical part, right? And, and they go hand in hand. But if we were to break it down, the, the, uh, the nuts and brass tacks of it all, Really, you really need to take care of, of your vision and your hearing, okay? So, quick sip here. Um, what I did here was I fast-forwarded us to, to week three, right? So, we're going to start here. And so, we're going to skip week two. And, and because we're on a limited amount of time, I want to show you how Balance University progresses, right? We're also going to do some exercises that are in the graduates program. This is just a continued progression. So if you start in week one and you do your homework, you come to class consistently, right? And what you're going to see is a huge progression in your ability to balance. And here, jump into week three is going to give us an idea of how each week we progress, okay? Real quickly, though, Talking about the website, I don't know if many of you have had a chance to go to the website or ha how many of you have actually gone to the references and sources. Even the YouTube channel with all the, the videos and things and topics. Let me just give you an example of all the lectures that I've given. And most of these lectures are in between five and ten minutes, right? But I'm packing in tons of data. This is for FGCU's. Academy, their online academy is, is what Balance University is done through. But this is just an example 
of what we've covered, right? Hip fractures and falls during the holiday season. Depression and falls. The overview of fall prevention programs. What to look for this holiday season and what to look for when visiting your parents or other places this Christmas. New Year's resolutions. How can wearable technology prevent falls? Remind me to come back to that. That's a good one. Obesity and, falls ri and fall risk. Depression and the impacts of falls. Going to the bathroom at night and falls. Osteoarthritis, arthroplasty, just total joint replacements and falls. Dehydration, flexibility, leg strength. Shoes, the psoas muscle. Bonus points, anybody can spell psoas muscle? Who can spell psoas? It starts with a P. Who would have known? It's one of those goofy, yeah, yeah. So the psoas muscle is the only muscle that connects the upper, to the, the upper body to the lower body, right? It's really weird, too, because it inserts in your spine, right? And it comes on your lower spine. It comes all the way down through the hip, passes through the pelvic floor, and connects on the inside of your femur, on that femoral head. Yeah, it's crazy muscle, but it can impact your balance if we don't take care of it. Medications or polypharmacy. There's a lot of us as we age that are taking multiple medications. That's what we call polypharmacy. How to fall proof your home, how to get out of chairs easily, and something that I've covered very recently is there's a crisis occurring in our CCRCs, our Continuing Care Retirement Centers. Um, there are some pretty significant stats here when it comes to our retirement centers, right? And we're talking about communities that go to independent living, assisted, and then long-term memory care, right? My grandfather just entered one of those. Um, very pragmatic man, um, did it on his own, has a, I mean, he's the guy that's got the list of everything, every bank account, like every, every, his, every shoe size, I mean, he's got it down, he was an engineer, you know, so he's got it all down, but one of the stats we covered in our CCRCs was, was something uh, like this, more than seven out of ten long-term care facilities said a lack of qualified candidates and unemployment benefits have been the biggest obstacles in hiring new staff Okay, here's the one I wanted to read. 78% of nursing homes and 61% of assisted living communities are concerned workforce challenges might force them to close. More than one third of nursing homes are very concerned about having to shut their facilities. So if that's not motivation for you to work on your balance, to work on your language, right? Your new balance language, I don't know what is. And we're just at the precipice of this, right? 10,000 Americans turn 65 every day, okay? What was that I wanted to come back to? Oh, man. <laughs> wearable technology. I know. I don't do that. I don't like it. So, so wearable tech. Yeah. Wearable technology, all right? This is something important I, want, I definitely wanted to cover, all right? We'll go quick and we'll get to it. Um, there's two types of world wearable technology. You have Bluetooth, which is what we've had in the past. The problem with Bluetooth is you have to be at a relative distance. So for instance, in your home, you have a fall, you push the watch, you push the button on your, on your necklace there, someone comes or there's a, a, someone that comes on the intercom there at the, at, the, at the device in the home and they're able to speak to you or send help. That's Bluetooth technology. When I go outside of my home, that is no longer effective. Recently, within the last few years, there is a new type of technology, in fact, it's in our most recent Apple Watches, that use the same type of wireless technology that our phones use. So no matter where I'm at in the world, if I fall, my watch or my device will act like my phone. So there's two distinct differences, and it's all to do with proximity. So if you're still active, but you're concerned about falling, right, or you have a loved one you're concerned about falling, this is something you might want to check into. Is this wearable device, is it Bluetooth technology, or is it wireless technology like my phone, okay? I just wanted to plant that seed for you guys so you have that going forward, okay? Any questions with what we've covered so far? All right, you ready to get to work? All right, week three, but first we need to do our assessments. So if you're willing and able uh, let's have you stand. We're going to move behind our chairs nice and slowly. 
All right, nice and slowly. All right, first thing, we're going to stand directly behind our chairs. We're going to be nice and tall. We're going to bend our knees, hands on our chair, shoulders back, chest out, chin up. All right, core tight. That just means pull your belly button in. I want you to close your eyes. Keep your hand on your chair. Your feet are hip width apart. My feet are hip width apart. Hanging on to the chair, close your eyes. All right, we're going to hold this position for 15 seconds. If you feel confident, if you feel stable, right, I want you to lift your hands off the chair about an inch. Stay close to the chair, okay? If you don't feel comfortable or confident, maybe you need to open your eyes. Go ahead and do so. And three, two, one, and time. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move our feet as close together as we can get them. That's it. Same verbal cues. All right, hands on the chair. Eyes closed. Time has begun. If you feel comfortable and confident, you can raise your hand up an inch or two. Good. If you feel like a tree in the wind, go ahead and maybe one finger, maybe two fingers. Three, two, one, and time. Good. Now, let's all turn and face this direction here. All right, we're going to be balancing on one foot, but remember the process here, okay? So I want you to have your right leg closest to your chair, okay? So you guys here, y'all can turn and face this way, so that way we have access to our chair. Yes, sir? Perfect. And so what I want to do, first time is going to be eyes open. I'm going to shift my weight to my right foot. I'm going to lift the heel and the heel only of my left foot into the air. Bend your knee, holding on. Find a focal point, something in front of you to focus on. Get your bearings. All right, hand still on the chair. Let's go ahead and lift that foot up. I want you to be safe though, just an inch. Just an inch. Keep your hand on that chair, lift that foot. Good. Stay safe. If you feel confident and comfortable, you can take that hand and let it hover. That's it. Three two, one, and time. Now we're going to close our eyes. All right. No heroes here. Okay. If that was difficult for you, chances are closing the eyes are going to be real. It's going to be really challenging. Okay. So what I want you to do is be smart. All right. Let's be smart. So we've got our hand on the chair, our right hand. We're going to lift the heel of our left foot into the air. This is very important. Okay. Now I want you to close your eyes. Your foot is not in the air, the heel is in the air. Swaying like a tree in the wind, I want you to stay here. If you feel comfortable and you feel confident, you can raise that foot up just an inch. Hand is still on the chair. Good. If you feel comfortable and confident, you can lift that hand. Maybe stay, stay very close though. Three, two, and one. Good. Let's turn and face the other direction. Face the opposite direction. Okay, same thing. Same verbal cues. The first time we stand on our, our left foot, our eyes are going to be open, okay? So let's put our left hand on the chair. We're going to shift our weight to our left foot, right heel in the air. Eyes are open. Find you a focal point in front of you. Go ahead and let's raise that right foot. Remember, keep that knee bent. If you feel comfortable and confident, you can lift that hand off the chair. That's it. Stay safe. Three, two, one, and time. Again, we're going to close our eyes, okay? We're going to face the same direction. We're going to shift our weight to our left foot. We're going to bring that right heel into the air. Keep your toes on the ground. Right heel in the air, toes on the ground. Hand on the chair. You're going to close your eyes. All right. If you're swaying like a tree in the wind, stay right here. If you feel safe and confident, you can lift that foot up in the air. Keep that nose forward. Keep that nose over your toes. Three, two, one, and time. Very good. Let's get back to our chair. Grab a shot of water if you need it. We're going to take about 15, 20 seconds here. Sure. 
All right, those were our assessments. Again, this is how we would rate. It would be based on the touch. So if I'm standing on, on one leg with my eyes open, I'm standing on my left foot. Maybe if I don't touch at all, I have zero touches. I had the best score, right? If I touched five or more times, um, that's not very good, but because we don't want to discourage anyone, we say, let's get better instead of saying, man, that's terrible. <laughs> that's not good. Uh, so this is how we score. It's important to do this every week, even in the graduates program. Remember, the graduates program is just a continuation of Balance University. Balance University is just a 10 week program and it's not for everybody. I've had plenty of folks that want to improve their balance, but they're still playing tennis. They're still playing golf. They're still playing pickleball. To put them in the 10 week program would be a waste of time for these folks that are still young and active. So we just usher them into the graduates program, right? Because remember, balance is a language. If you're still speaking fluent balance, in order to maintain that, you need to meet that level. If you're not speaking fluent balance, then we need to get you there and build you up and build a foundation. Does that make sense? Okay. So week three, after we have progressed, right, we're doing hip bridges. All right, does everyone know what hip bridges are? That's it. And I think this is the last week we actually do those. Or we just started, week two. The first week, you remember the heel slides? Okay, what hip bridges are, in this position, I would pull my heels as close to my bottom as I could get them, and I would drive my heels into the ground and lift my hips up so that my knees, hips, and shoulders are in alignment. This is one of the best exercises you can do, right? Okay, so what we're going to do here in class is, because we're not going to get on the floor, we're just going to do a continuation, right? This is what week three looks like. I'm going to show you this, and then I'll show you what a progression or a graduate's program class would look like. And all that means is that you have gone through this program, and you have come every week, and now you've developed enough strength and enough balance to do a lot of these progressions, okay? So we're going to sit in our chairs, nice and tall. I want you to pull your back away from the chair, all right? Pull your back away from the chair. You're going to sit in about the middle of the chair. It's okay to hold on. I'm gonna slide my feet out in front of me. Your heels are on the ground, and now I'm gonna pull them back underneath, right? I'm gonna push them out and pull them in. Now remember, balance is comprised of four pillars. I want you to continue doing this while I talk. Balance is comprised of four pillars. Balance, posture, flexibility, and strength. Right now, we're working in the strength pillar. These exercises are targeted at improving our strength. All right, now here's what I want you to do. Now we're going to slide our legs out. This is a progression. You're going to lift your legs up. You're going to open, close, down, pull them back in. So we're out, one, up, two, out, three, in, four, down, five, pull them in. It's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Good. One, two, three, four, five, and six. One more time. One, two, three, four, five, and six. What do you know? Today it's Florida Blue. Tomorrow it's the Rockettes. We're on our way. <laughs> Just wait, Macy's. You ain't seen nothing yet. <laughs> you feel your legs heating up? Good. So first, we did our hip bridges, or what our alternative would be. It's just like, how many of you woke up today? How many of you did hill slides or hip bridges? Good. Good. So here's the other thing. All right. There's 10,080 minutes in a week. 10,080 minutes in a week. You only need 1% of that time to improve your balance. That basically breaks down to about 30 minutes, four days a week. You don't even need that. Guys, when you're cooking for your wives, right? You remember this one? And you're watching the microwave number tick down, right? You can work on standing on one foot or work on your balance position of confidence. 
right? So think about all those little times during the day to identify opportunities to improve your balance because the time to work on your balance is not after a fall, okay? And I've got news for you. If you've fallen within the last year, the chances of you falling again are twice as likely. If you have a significant fall, in other words, you break a hip, you break a femur, you break a humerus, you break an arm, your chances of living post five years are very, very low, okay? And, and that's things we don't like to talk about, but in class, we need to, right? Okay, so now we've done exercise number one. This is strength. Now we're gonna do number two. This ball is just to signify a distance I want in between your knees, right? People who have really weak legs tend to push their legs together and use that, that force to help get their legs up. So we wanna keep our knees separated, right? So we're gonna sit down, same thing, middle of our chair, nice and tall, all right? We're gonna come up and down. Now pull your feet all the way underneath you, up, Good, and down, that's it, nice and tall. Try not to let your back touch the chair, and smooth. Try to get those legs up and down at the same time, right? Up, bring them up at the same time and down, that's it. Up and down, good. Hold it right there, take your hands, all right? Now we're gonna see how many of you still have a little bit of rhythm, here we go. Spit your gum out if you're chewing it. As we come down, our hands come down. As we come up, our arms go up. Touch your thumbs over your head. Down and up. Good. Down and up. Good and up. You got it. Three more. One, two, last one, three, and rest. So I have a lot of people these little exercises catch folks off guard. They just, don't, they just don't realize how these little movements can impact your muscles. You feel your muscles heating up a little bit, right? Feel them burning a little bit? It's what I call spicy. It's a little spicy, all right? Any questions? No questions there? All the, yes ma'am. You ever see a tree sway in the wind? So it, it's just me trying to give you an illustration. Um, if you're already swaying like that in the wind and you have the toes on the ground, if we were to eliminate that, it's going to be worse. There's nothing physiological there other than me just trying to use that as an analogy to describe where you should be. Yeah, that, that's a sign that your vestibular system, your balance is poor. Oh, okay. So then we want to close your eyes. Correct. Okay. And closing your eyes will always be hard. It's supposed to be that way, right? That's why the vestibular system is so important, right? But what we rely on, what we practice when we close our eyes, what we're working on is communicating with our feet and with our proprioceptors in our leg to communicate to our brain where we are in space and time and where the pressure is at on our foot, right? So if I'm too far this way, I'm gonna get signals from my brain. That's the first stage. The second stage is how well can my brain unpack that data, right? And then once it unpacks and interprets and sig signals back, did I do it in a sufficient amount of time? In other words, did I get it under the gun, under the, under the buzzer? The buzzer would be the point of no return, all right? So if I'm leaning here and I realize I'm starting to lean, signals come up, signals go down, I can catch myself. I can, can um, enact a process to prevent myself from falling. If, if I'm not efficient, signals go up, uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. I fall and then I enact my reaction, it's too late. Bingo, bingo. And it even goes deeper than that because now you're talking about not only as we age, the synapses in our brains get further apart, but now you're talking about um, uh, things like dopamine, neurotransmitters, 
that that go off the rails and don't they don't make it to the other train station but here's the good news the brain is malleable you remember in our first lecture we talked about Naperville Indiana Naperville Illinois I'm sorry Naperville Illinois where they had the the experiment the PE teacher where he took the kids out and they ran the laps measured their heart rates, made sure that they were exercising in the proper zones, brought them in, did some testing. In one year, these guys went from being not very good at, at certain subjects. In fact, their, their schools were really suffering, didn't have the money to bring in all these tutors and special equipment. So what they did was they tried this experiment. This PE teacher, what they discovered is they, these guys through this experiment became number one in their testing, 100 schools around the world in all different nations, Singapore, China, Japan, Australia, UK, all these different countries, they were number one in, in math, number one. It was math or science, so don't, don't quote me. It's, it's either math or science, but they were number one. And all this was attributed to them going outside. In 2007, German researchers discovered that if you exercise prior to memorizing words, those that exercise will memorize 20% more than those that don't, all right? Through that research in, lecture, in the first lecture we talked about, we discovered the brain was malleable, right? So you can start to realign those synapses. But all that is predicated on the fact that you move. That, that's why we work on strength, posture and flexibility we get the heart rate up we get in our zones we need to be in for exercise to be termed as exercise then we're in a group so we're socializing right you remember that being another factor for for bdnf the the neurotropin it's just a chemical in the brain that helps get these guys lined up and then we work on our balance that's our language that's what we're after that's the science behind this all right that's what this is based on so let me show you another great exercise. We did it last week. We're gonna do it this week. I'm gonna have everyone stand. You're gonna stay right in front of your chair. All right. We're gonna start with our feet hip width apart. Okay. Our hands are gonna be out in front of us or you can use them to guide you into your seat. But we're going to sit as slowly as we can without plopping. All right, no plopping. Remember, no plop zone. So what you have to do is get your nose over your toes, stick your bottom out, get your weight on your heels. We're going down four, slow, hold on, three, not yet, not yet. Two, I feel like William Wallace, hold. One, nice and easy, or as easy as you can, sit down. Good, that's it, that's it, nice and easy. Good. And we're up. <laughs> All right, here we go. Ready? 99, 98, 3, 2, hold it, and 1. Good. Now we're going to be up again. Hands over your head. If, you, if you're willing and able, all right, I want everyone to be safe. That's the first and foremost thing, okay? I want you to be safe, right? If, you have, if your shoulders hurt, you can go here. You can even keep them in, your, in front of you. Now, let's go down. Again, no plop zone. Four. That means you got to stick your bottom out. You really got to get your bottom out. Three. Push those hands back. Two. And one. One more time, just like that. And we're up. Four. Three, two, three, no, one rest. <laughs> Do you feel the difference between having your hands in the air and that impact on the lower back? I think I showed you guys the founder's exercise last week. We'll do that one again too. So just these little changes, these little variables, what we call progressions, is how we continue to improve our strength and balance, right? Each week, each two weeks, we'll introduce a different variable and we'll just continually change it and make it harder each week and you'll see your balance go from from bad good better and best okay all right any questions over our strength pillar good now we're going to move into posture 
And these exercises are designed to help us improve our posture. Now, last week we did our reverse shoulder swings. We're going to do the same thing, but we're going to progress this. This is week three. Usually I'll have people stand there with their feet side by side and we'll close our eyes, right? What I'll do is have them stand really close to their chair so they can feel the chair on their hip. And that tends to ground people, give them some sense of where they are with their eyes closed. Today in class, what we're going to do is we're going to get into our balanced position of confidence and we're going to combine a couple exercises from last week. You remember how we shifted our weight? We're going to do that at the same time. We're going to have our arms opening as we move backwards and closing as we move forwards. What this is doing is giving our brains multiple things to think about and process. Just like when we walk and we're carrying on a conversation. How many of you have had a misstep while walking and talking? Right. I'm not even going to ask if you're chewing gum or not. That's a whole nother level. Right. So what we're trying to do is imitate this. This is what we call functional. It's practical. This is what we do in everyday life. OK, so let's do this. If you're willing and able, let me have you stand. We're going to face this direction. All right. OK, we're going to put our right leg in front. Now, find find a good position for you. You can go behind your chair, go behind your chair if you need to. That'll give you a little extra sense. Yeah. Yeah, that's usually what I do is have, have folks go behind, good. And so what I want you to do is put your right foot forward. In this position, you may not look like the person in front or behind you. What I want you to do is be about 90% sure in your ability to stand here. There's, there's a little bit of uncertainty, but you're pretty confident, all right? So before we start moving our arms, let's just do a run through, right? Let's do a run through. Let's move our weight to the front leg and then move your weight to the back leg. When you move that weight to the back leg, keep your nose forward, okay? Your shoulders shouldn't go backwards. And to the front, and to the back. Okay, so you should have a pretty good idea of where your feet need to be. If you need to adjust your feet, go ahead and do so now. All right, let's take our hands out in front of us, palms to the sky. If you need to use one, just use one. All right, palms to the sky, that's it. Pinkies touching one another. All right, let's shift our weight to the front. Hold that position, just hold steady, get your bearings. And slowly, we're gonna shift our weight to the back and as you move back, open those arms. Good. Get your bearings and shift your weight slowly to the front. Stay safe now, stay safe. Hold. And now to the back. Nice and easy. Now don't lean back, just shift your weight. One more time to the front and to the back, good. And relax, let's turn and face the other direction, very good. And this time our left foot will be forward, left foot forward, okay. now. This may be different than the right foot, right? Because we're all better balanced on one foot than the other. Did you guys do your little experiment? Did you watch people in casual conversation last week? Huh? Everybody, did you see? Did you see how people talk when they talk? Most folks lean to one side or another. Okay, here we go. Left foot forward. Let's just do a practice run, okay? Let's do a practice run. Let's shift to the front nice and slow. Stay safe. And then shift to the back nice and easy. Take your time. One more time to the front and now to the back. Good. Now, if you need to shift positions, go ahead and do so now. If you need to shift your feet, do so now. Let's take our hands out in front of us. That's it. Palms to the sky. All right. Keep those nose forward. We're going to shift. All right. We're to the front. And now let's shift to the back. And as we shift to the back, our arms open. There you go. Keep your nose forward. Keep your shoulders forward. And to the front, nice and slow. And to the back. Open, nice and easy. Stay forward, don't lean backwards. And to the front, one more time. And to the back. 
and rest and have a seat. Good, good, good. So I think a lot of folks get surprised at when they get into that split stance. Holy moly, that's a little unstable, right? Maybe a little more than what you thought. And when we start throwing the arm movement in there, it just creates a little more chaos in the movement, right? It gives your brain a little more to think about. So as we advance, as you continue to come and you continue to get better, you continue to practice, right? Eventually what we'll do is we'll get you here and then we're going backwards. And then we're down and going up, right? And then we'll get to where we're pushing up and coming down, right? So all this is think about a step. Think about a series of steps. Level one, level two, level three, level four, level five. And you're doing this progressively each week, okay? Any questions? So now our chair reach and raise. Lucky for you, I'm going to make you stand again. All right? <laughs> so the whole point of making you sit down and stand again, you know what that is? That's getting you doing a whole lot of sit to stands, right? So I know you guys are like, oh, well, you should have just stayed standing. No, no we're just going to start adding reps in there. All right? So now the chair reach and raise, our feet are going to be about hip width apart here, okay? Now, remember the demonstration I showed you on the wall? If we were to go straight down, I'm just going to fall forward. So remember your center of mass. Remember your balance center of mass. As we go down, your rear end has to go out. I want you to imagine you have a ball, volleyball, soccer ball, whatever it is, over your head. Okay, now I want you to be very careful here. We're going to go down. We're going to bend over. If you feel lightheaded, sit down. Go as far as you can, stay safe. Now bend at the waist here, bend at the waist. You want your knees slightly bent. We're gonna come up. You've got that imaginary soccer ball. Keep your head forward, bend your knees, and you're gonna push back so that your biceps cover your ears. Stretch that chest out. And we're down, nice and slow. Again, remember if you get lightheaded, that's, that's okay. And we're up, and up, up, up. Good. And down, and what we're doing here, our brain is learning how to position ourselves so we don't fall when we pick something off, off the floor. And we're up, and push, push, and down, good. And up, that's it, one more time. Push back, stretch, and down. and up good and push push and relax and you can sit <laughs> good any questions it's just simple type of movements like that now all of us can identify times in our days where we can do things like this right generally in class what i'll do is in my class is i'll highlight i usually send out what we do our exercise if you haven't found the video library on the website, check it out. It has a, a video of every exercise that's done in the book is on the website and it's free. It's free, okay? So what I usually do is highlight two exercises because I know we all live a busy life, right? And so I wanna make sure that you understand, yes, what you put into it is what you get out of it. But if you do something every day, you will see some results, all right? want to be very practical, be very honest with you, all right? The more you put into it, the more you get out of it. So if you were to do this four times a week, but if you were to just pick a couple of exercises, you're still going to improve. Maybe not at the rate as others would that are doing the whole thing, but you would still improve, okay? Any questions? Awesome. Man, you guys are so quiet today. What's today? None. Wednesday, they all run together. We played soccer this weekend, though. Holy moly. Have any, have any of you guys, uh, have y'all recognized how hot it is outside? <laughs> or is it just me? <laughs> no, nah, I have one. Listen, thank goodness it's not humid, though, right? Yeah, right. So here, here's our posture, right? Here's our posture. So what we want to do 
is we're going to, same as last week, there's, there's many, many ways to strengthen a muscle. There's really only a few on how to stretch them, right? So what we want to do is let's start with both feet out in front of us, okay? We're going to have them spread out, all right? Both feet out in front of us. I want you to move to about the middle of your chair, all right? Don't get too far forward where you fall out. But what I want to do is I'm going to reach down with both hands. It's okay if your toes point forward. It's okay if they point to the sky. You're going to reach out with both hands and just hold, and you'll feel a pull in the back of your legs there. It might be in the back of the hamstring, back of the knee. It might be in your back. It might be in the back of the calves. But as long as you're feeling a stretch, you're doing it right, okay? All right, three, two, one. You're going to come up, bring your feet in. All right, so now my feet are chair leg width apart. I'm going to take both hands. I'm going to reach down in between my legs. If I can get to the floor, I'm going to work my way backwards. Work them underneath the chair. Reach back underneath if you can. Good, good. Five, four, three, two, one, and then we're going to come up. Good. So now, if you have a total joint replacement, right, I don't want you to do this. Let's say you have a hip replacement on the right side, then you can cross the left leg over if you ha and vice versa. But what you don't want to do is if you have a hip replacement, I don't want you to do this exercise this way. I'm going to show you an alternative, right? We're going to be crossing our leg over. You guys remember the therapist or doctor, they told you never cross the midline. So with your right leg, if you have a hip replacement in your right hip, don't do this. If you do not, go ahead and let's cross that right leg over, okay? If you do have some hardware in there, what you can do is you can stand and you're gonna cross your left leg over and just lean just as much as you need to so you feel the stretch, okay? Or you can just skip this all together, it's up to you. All right, so I've got my right leg crossed over. Now, you feel that stretch back there in your glute? That's your piriformis, okay? That's your piriformis, that's also another muscle that's very important. Well, now what I want you to do is take your hands out in front of us, you're gonna lean forward, that's it. And now you'll feel that stretch go from stretch to holy cow. All right, if you're at holy cow phase, listen, that's, that's the technical term, all right? You can trust me on that. Then we need to do this daily, right? And the reason we need to do this daily is because we need to restore the elasticity in this muscle because this is gonna impact lower back pain. It's also gonna impact our gait pattern relax let's rotate remember hip replacement on the left side don't do it what about knee you can stand if you have a hip replacement you can stand knee knee you're fine knees you're fine all right we're going to go over okay you feel that now if you can't get your leg up or you know someone what you can do is take a towel and wrap the towel around the ankle and pull it up as high as you can, right? So maybe you have a friend or a spouse that can't quite get their leg up. That's how we'll address that, okay? So we, we, got our, we have our leg here. We're going to, again, lean forward. And what you may notice is that, oh, my gosh, one side is a whole lot tighter than another, right? There you go. Just holding steady. Good. It helps if you smile. I'm sure we can find some research somewhere about that. <laughs> All right, hold it. Five, four, three, two, one, and time. Good, and relax. So again, how many of you watch TV? <laughs> right? <laughs> so these are some things you can do, remember, to help improve your balance. You do not want to wait until you experience a fall and then think to yourself, man, I need to work on my balance. Movement is the foundation of life, right? So I had a, a, a client years ago that called me and what had happened was, long story short, he was in a restaurant and a waiter was coming through and he just was trying to step backwards and he fell down. Well, what would happen was there was a lack of glute strength and ham strength, right? And 
believe it or not, it is true. How many have heard the old wives tell that the more you sit, the flatter your bottom gets? It's true. It is true. And also the weaker those glutes get, right? And so what happened is as he was stepping backwards, there wasn't enough strength to stop that momentum. He didn't have a great night's sleep the night before, and he just lost his balance and fell down. And so he was super embarrassed, started to withdraw, right? And here's another thing that, that we don't talk a lot about, depression. Depression is a big issue in our senior community. And one of the things that you combat depression with is socialization, right? It's like the one thing you combat obesity with is stop eating that dead gum brisket and go for a jog, right? So it's, it's, the, it's, it's a lack of energy maybe, and the way you get energy is by exercising. Well, the, la the way you get glute strength is by doing some of these things we're doing today. And so we got him going, eventually built his confidence back up, and, and he actually went to the restaurant. He called me, you know, he's almost in tears. You know, there's a lot of other things that transpired, but, but he was just so happy to see friends and go back out with his spouse and, and things like that, right? So if you know someone like that has had a fall and you notice some withdrawal, that is a downward spiral, right? You need, to, you need to act, and you need to act quickly, okay? Remember, falling is not a natural part of aging. So this is our postural pillar. Remember, strength is important for our balance because balance begins at the joints. We need to stabilize the joints. We do that with strength. Posture is important to our balance because it puts our balance center of mass where it's supposed to be here, not here where our back is having to overwork. Flexibility is important because it allows us a full gait pattern without disruption. It allows those muscles to work through their full range of motion. Any questions so far? All right, now for the balance. And so you can see the, the circles there. That is just to identify the different phases, right? Split stance is level one. Single leg is label two, and the way we distinguish between the two is just the colors there, and there's a chart in the book that'll help you distinguish that. There are exercises you can use equipment, and I've included that, but you don't need equipment. Most folks have equipment around the house. They've gathered over, over time, and so if you have that, you can use it. We've tried to include it. So the first thing we're gonna do is gonna be a single leg calf raise. Here's the deal, guys. We're gonna be standing on our feet for about the next five to 10 minutes. If you need a break, feel free to sit down at any time, okay? So if you can, if you're willing and able, let me have you stand. We're gonna go behind our chairs. We're gonna go through a series of about three or four exercises here. And take your time. <clears throat> now, we're gonna face we're gonna face the same direction we've started with, right? We're gonna turn so that our right leg is closest to our chair. All right, we're gonna turn so the right leg is closest to the chair. Now let's go ahead and get in our split stance so our right foot is forward. This is our balanced position or confidence or our split stance. And so what I wanna do now, hang on nice and tight, okay? We're gonna rise up onto our toes like a ballerina and then easy down three, two, and one. Your weight should be split evenly here. And we're up and down three, two, and one. And three, and down three, two, and one. And four, three, two, and one. You can use that chair. You can absolutely end up five, three, two, and one, coming down in six, up, 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 three, two, one, that's it, seven, three, two, down slowly, one, great job, and eight, up, 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 three, two, and one, very good, let's turn and face the opposite direction. This time our left foot will be forward, good, left foot forward, Chest up, chin up, find a focal point, knee slightly bent, weight distribute evenly, and we're up, up on our toes, and down slow. Three, two, and one. And two, and three, two, one. Keep that nose forward. 
in three, three, two, one, and four, three, two, one, that's it, up on those toes, up, 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 hold it, and five, three, two, one, and six, three, two, one, and seven, three, two, one, and eight, up, 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 good, three, two, and one, good, and relax, well done. Now let's keep facing the same direction, right? We're already this way. So what we're going to do is your feet are going to be side by side, okay? The chair is on my left side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on lifting my right leg up. I want to get my knee parallel to the ground if I can. I'm going to bring it up. I'm going to demonstrate control. And then I'm going to put it right back down in the same place it came from, okay? Excuse me, find your focal point in front of you. All right, hand on the chair for at least the first couple of repetitions. All of us together. Ready? Shift your weight to your left foot. Right leg comes up. 1,001, 1,002, and down. Shift, lift, one, two, down. One more time with your hand on. Shift, lift, one, two, down and down. If you feel comfortable and confident, you can let your hand hover. Maybe go to one or two fingers. Shift, lift, one, two, and down. Good. Shift, lift, one, two, and down. Last time. Shift, lift, one, two, and down. Good. Let's turn and face the opposite direction. Same thing, okay? Chest up, chin up, core tight. We're gonna shift to our right foot, lift that left leg up, bend that knee. 1,001, 1,002, and we're down. Put it right back down where it came from. Ready, shift, lift, one, two, and down. Find that focal point. Shift, lift, one, two, and down, good. Shift, lift, one, two, and down. That's it. Two more. Shift, lift, one, two, and down. Last one. Shift, lift, one, two, and down. You feel your foot working? Pretty nuts, isn't it? Watch this. Same thing. This is a graduate's exercise, right? This is called pendulum. Momentum is the enemy of balance, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use momentum. Oh, you're gonna shift your weight to your right leg and all you're gonna do, all of your weight is on that right leg. Left leg is not gonna to touch, but you're gonna swing the leg to the front, pause, and then to the back and pause. Pay attention to your foot. Watch how much your foot is working. Here's the deal. Your leg, your lower leg should start to burn. Just, just start because it's working so much. If it doesn't, here is a fine line. You're relying on the chair too much. But I want you to be safe. So you have to gauge that. Use the chair as much as you need, but not too much. All right? So here we go. We're going to shift our weight. We're all facing the same direction. We're going to shift our weight to our right foot. Our left foot is going to go forward just in front of the right foot. All right, get your bearings, bend your knee. Now shift it to the back. Hold and to the front. Back and front. And back and front. Back and front. Back and front. Three more. Back and front. Back and front, last time, back and front. You feel your leg burning? Mm -hmm. Let's turn and face the other direction. Good, that's building strength right there. All right, we're gonna shift our weight to our left foot. Bring your right foot in front, pause, get your bearings, and now let's shift to the back. 
and front, bend that knee, and back. Front, good, and back. Front, good, and back. Front, keep that nose forward, keep your nose over your toes, and back. Find that focal point, front, and back. Three more, front, and back, front, and back. Last one, front, and back. Good, and rest. Feel that? That lower leg is getting stronger, right? Same thing as when you're doing bicep curls or any other strengthening exercise or load bearing exercise, okay? Makes sense to strengthen the lower leg since it's our lower leg that is the first thing that hits the ground, our foot and then the signals running through that leg there, right? Good. Any questions? One of the best exercises you can do, sitting slows and single leg laterals. Any article that you read that talks about exercises to improve your balance will have the single leg lateral. And the reason why is just as we were using momentum going front to back, you're using momentum going out and in. To me, it makes more sense to go front to back since that's the way we walk. I mean, some of us, well, I'll say it like this, some of us may, may think we're crabs, Right? <laughs> so single leg lateral. Let's just, uh, I tell you what, let's turn and face this way. It's self-explanatory. Not a lot of explanation needs to go here. I do want to tell you, though, you don't want to swing your leg out so far that you have lateral flexion in the spine, right? I don't want to go out here and then lean this way, right? I want to keep a nice neutral spine. I'm only going to go out maybe six, eight inches. If you can, Keep that left foot in the air as you work through the set, as you work through this movement. If you need to, you can go out. When you come back in, put it on the ground if you need it. If you can, I want you to be efficient here. Efficiency is key. Bring it out, bring it in, keep it in the air. You'll notice the same burn, okay? Here we go. Deep breath. Shift your weight to your right foot. Bend your knee. Find your focal point, lift the left foot in the air, keep it down underneath you, you ready? And we're gonna go one, you're gonna go nice and smooth out and in. And two, keep that hand on the chair if you need it. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten good let's switch and look the other way you feel that leg a little bit good all right same thing all right you ready shift your weight to your left foot find your focal point let's bring that right leg into the air just just be patient you ready we're gonna go out and in out and in, there's two, here's three, and four, and five, six, seven, eight, nine, three more, 10, 11, Last one, swing it out and hold it, hold it, hold it. And in, rest, sit down. <laughs> so you kind of get a taste of what the classes look like. Any questions, right? Any questions over balance in general? When I first started diving into this, uh, you know, I was led in, I was inspired by Mr. Wolf. You guys remember that story. The more I dug into it, the more I started to realize, holy cow, there's a lot to this. I was actually looking for curriculum to study, to use. And the more I opened this up, the more I realized this is a space not a lot of people in the field 
have, have written about or talked about. There's a lot of folks in academia, believe me, I've met with lots of them, you know, and they all, st most of them still think that most of you guys can stand on one foot for 15 seconds. You know, you'll find some that know, that, that know what's going on, right? So what I wanna leave you with is the balance language, okay? Two most important exercises you can do, the sitting slows, and the single leg laterals. That's going to cover your leg strength. It's going to cover your balance. Okay? Flexibility is important. Don't stop moving. Whatever you do, do not stop moving. Okay? All right. Any questions? No. Yes, ma'am. For now. Yeah, COVID, COVID hit us really hard. And so, I mean, instructors, you know, had moved and now they're going on vacations and stuff. We generally, during season, have a class at a sterile rec center. And then I do my classes through FGCU Academy online. I teach that one. You can come in person or it's a hybrid class or you can do it online. Um, we've got a nice little following there. This next season coming up, we're hoping to add at least two more classes in the community. Um, gated communities, uh, that's where we were. We sell, I self-published in May of 2018. Built all this momentum, and in March of 2020, I lost 80% of my revenue in two weeks. Gone. So, you know, no sense in crying over spilt milk, but we're building that back, and so we're going to start, hopefully, build more classes in the community gated communities if you guys live in gated communities and are interested in bringing balance university there please let me know we have an instructor's course so if you want to teach sir you know someone that would like to teach balance university you can take the course we're working on getting that accredited so that when you take it you get continuing education units so this is all like i said there wasn't a lot of people that had worked in the field that had worked on this space and it has taken me four years to give you the product you see now. So it's a lot of research and a lot of reading, but um, knowing what we know about the statistics is definitely worth it. You know, I would even go as far as say is that it saves lives for sure. So guys, I wanna just thank you for listening to me. My uncle gave me some great advice years ago. He said, the mind can only take what the rear end can handle. So don't talk too long. <laughs> Do you have a question?